Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the teams at Hands On Labs and eScience Labs today for a webinar on pivoting online during a pandemic and the power of lab solution partnerships. We're excited to showcase the partnerships we've been curating as well as the new digital products we've created together to help instructors like you transition their lab online. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to review the webinar logistics and give a brief introduction on what you can expect to see throughout this presentation today. We encourage all of you to participate in the conversation by asking questions and sharing resources. Please use the chat function to join in the discussion. Be sure to toggle the window to all panelists and attendees if you'd like the entire group to see your comments or questions. Default is to just all panelists. If you have questions, add those specifically in the Q&A box. You can find this section in your Zoom toolbar. We have several distance learning specialists on the panel today to help answer any questions you have in real time. At any point in the conversation, you can raise your virtual hand and our distance learning specialist will send you a private chat message to support your needs. Our panelists will address as many questions as possible. However, if we're unable to answer all of them due to time limitations, we'll be sure to include this information in our post webinar follow up email. We'll share the lucky winner of our Amazon gift card raffle in addition to the webinar recording in that email as well. In just a second, Dr. Caitlin will kick the presentation off with a quick poll to get our attendees engaged. To participate in the polling segment, all you have to do is submit your response when prompted with the pop-up poll on screen. So what can you expect to see today? During our session today, we're excited to explore new ways for instructors to bring their lab online. For those of you in the audience that haven't heard of hands-on labs or e-science labs before, our brands have always focused on the powerful combination between physical kits and rigorous science curriculum for higher ed institutions looking to offer a tactile lab experience for distance learners. Since COVID hit, unfortunately, We've redoubled our efforts to offer a robust library of digital course offerings that include virtual learning experiences exclusively online. With the help of our partners BioDigital and Odigia, we are proud to share a myriad of new options to help institutions pivot online during this pandemic. Today, we will give our attendees a preview of several new digital products we've been curating so you can get an idea of the variety of lab solutions out there. Now that we've covered the majority of our Zoom logistics, it's time to get our audience involved. I'd like to hand it over to our Chief Academic Officer to launch our polling segment. So without further ado, I present you Dr. Caitlin Runny Janzi. Hello, good morning everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to be uh, sharing this presentation with you of some of our new products and our fantastic partnerships. So let's get the ball rolling with our poll. Uh, the first question we have for you is what challenges are you facing with bringing your lab courses online? I'll give you a couple of seconds to um, answer the question um, and you can also um, include any answers that aren't listed here in the other section through chat. Okay, maybe one more second and we can see the results. Okay, great. So yeah, there are definitely some great answers here. It seems like the majority of you, of all of you are uh, most concerned with recreating a tactile lab experience for remote learners. And I definitely get that concern. Um, and our team is gonna focus on that later on in the conversation to show you how we're recreating um, digitally what students are doing in a tactile lab experience. I also see student engagement and retention in there and safety in there. And those are definitely some major concerns we address as we are working through our development process, which I'll touch on in a moment. So while there are definitely many concerns um, before jumping into uh, an online lab course, there's also a number of benefits with for students taking a lab course online. Um, for the professor, it offers you a lot of flexibility. Um, it also expands access to students who maybe wouldn't typically take a lab course due to either time constraints or um, just uh, not feeling confident in themselves moving into a lab. It also offers a diversity of perspectives. So students who um, are atypical or are not necessarily um, your um, traditional student on campus 
uh, tend to take online courses and it really opens up a greater diversity of perspectives as they're moving through the labs. Um, for students, um, it can improve their time management and self-motivation because they're relying on themselves to work through the labs. Um, it also forces them to become more proactive about their um, education. Um, and finally, uh, it can help improve virtual communication skills, um, both between students and between um, the, faculty and the, the faculty and the students. So a number of the obstacles that you guys shared today have to do with safety, course rigor, and the process behind recreating that tactile lab experience for remote learners. When designing course materials for online labs, our curriculum development team um, has a very rigorous content creation process that helps to mitigate these underlying concerns. We know that online learners are very different um, than face-to-face -face learners. As I mentioned before, a number of them are non-traditional students. Um, and this difference really drives our curriculum development process. Our curriculum is designed around the three of the five E's of science, exploration, experimentation, and evaluation. Knowing that our students are working without an instructor next to them, we develop our experiments first and then build out our curriculum. And this really helps to ensure that students have all of the information that they need to successfully complete their lab experience. And through this methodology, we're really able to ensure that students are safe and that the course curriculum is rigorous. So after giving you this brief introduction, um, the next real piece of the lab puzzle um, focuses on uh, e-learning platforms um, through which the content is delivered, which is a great transition um, into our first partnership we wanna share with you today. Through our brand, eScience Labs, we've partnered with Odigia and their ready-to-go courseware that leverages both eScience Labs content and lab kits for more, course, for more course flexibility and online lab options. Instructors are able to replace their costly textbook with an affordable and effective learning solution for their online lab that has proven to increase learner engagement, outcomes, and retention. So I'm gonna hand the mic over to our host from Odigia, Lindsay, who's gonna walk you through a preview of our new course offerings and their powerful platform and how the ESL content integration works for both students and instructors. Um, without further ado, here's Lindsay. Hey everyone, thank you Kate so much for that introduction. I am so excited to show you how the Odigia teaching and learning tools really empower instructors to help students succeed. So one of the things that I know that a lot of instructors just mentioned was student engagement. And that is really our focus here at Odigia. So we do that in a myriad of different ways, including the ability to personalize learning, as well as the ability for instructors to control and modify content, not only according to their outcomes and goals and syllabus needs, but also to the needs of their students as well. Odigia also provides the opportunity for increased engagement, not only just for the student, but also the student and instructor uh, relationship as well. And instructors are also able to track progress using tools such as game theory, as well as the students. And all of this is offered at significant cost reduction in comparison to a traditional publisher text. In Odigia, we have more than 120 ready-to-go titles in our course catalog, including biology, which I will be showing you today, as well as multiple chemistry and AMP offerings, as well as materials for other science courses, including ecology and environmental science. As I mentioned, all of these courses are able to be customized according to your needs while seamlessly integrating with all LMS providers via LTI. Odigia is also completely device agnostic and works on either a student or an instructor's phone, tablet, Chromebook, Mac, or PC without any additional software downloads or apps to purchase. And during these difficult times, one of the largest benefits of Odigia is the ability to provide a robust as well as a flexible solution. And Odigia supports virtual, hybrid or blended, as well as face-to-face -face courses. And we also provide the opportunity to quickly and easily shift between these modalities. So hypothetically, if you're starting virtually, but the hope is to, in the future, go to face-to-face -face or blended or hybrid, or vice versa, if you are able to start face-to-face. -face. And eventually, if you do have to go to a blended, hybrid, or virtual model, we can support all of those modalities. 
And Odigia's course, uh, ready to go courseware, is $29.95 per student per semester for the lecture part of the materials. And this offers significant savings over comparable STEM materials while offering the ability to integrate and align the virtual labs from eScience for an additional cost. So today I'm going to go ahead and give you a high level overview of the student experience, <clears throat> excuse me, and what Odigia looks like. So this is an actual course that I'm showing you right now in Odigia. And in this example, I'm going to show you how the eScience labs look like when integrated with the OpenStax biology text. If you are using a different text and are only interested in the virtual labs, you will see the eScience labs in the Odigia platform without the OpenStax content. And in Odigia, the ability to explore content in a variety of different ways really makes students active participants in their learning. Again, increased student engagement is our main goal here, as we talked about earlier in the polling question. Here in Odigia, students can use this drop down menu to find specific concepts, or they can also use the course outline, or they can use this progress map over to the right hand side. And this progress map is actually one of the students' favorite tools in Odigia. The progress is tracked visually, and students always know what they have completed and what they still need to complete in their course. In Odigia, content is organized in sets and concepts. And you can think of sets as chapters and concepts as subchapters within a traditional book. I'm gonna go ahead and let's enter this concept and take a look at how the students engage with the content in Odigia. So this concept may, these concepts may include readings, images, videos, and other interactive learning materials. And Odigia allows students to effortlessly highlight content, as you can see some here, as well as the ability to go ahead and take notes in the material, also increasing engagement, as well as there's embedded vocabulary words that can also be helped and used as a studying tool. And as I said, this is the actual lecture part of the course materials. And as you're scrolling through, you can also see that there are these try it questions. And these activities allow students to really dive deeper into their learning before moving on to another area. And Odigia also combines learning materials, discussions, and other tools to create a familiar social experience for students. So for example, students here can create a new post that you can tell is in line with the actual content they're working on. And they can also participate in existing discussions as well, either from their peers or from their instructor. And the activity feed that you can see up here also allows students to interact with other course discussions. They can comment, like, save, or also create a new post here. And instructors can feature specific posts. And also this, again, encourages peer-to-peer -peer learning. But let's go ahead and see the eScience labs and how they're integrated in Odigia. So all of the eScience labs have a pre-lab introduction that the student will engage with before moving on to the experiment. And here, when they're done, they can actually open the experiment. And here they'll see everything that they need in order to complete that actual experiment. Let me show you, this is another example of an interactive lab experience where the students can engage with the lab materials virtually. In this specific lab, as I'm clicking through, you can see that the students are given an opportunity to engage with a yeast metabolism lab in a similar way as they would in a physical lab environment. As you can see up here in the upper left, they are given specific step-by-step -step directions and prompts as to what needs to be completed next to lead them through this engaging exercise. And once the students are done, they can complete the post-lab assignment in Odigia and submit that to their instructor. 
when an assignment is submitted, the instructor will, ins will receive a notification and can grade and provide feedback to the students as well. Odigia also has a very robust instructor dashboard. And here, the instructor can see a lot of uh, performance metrics here. So for this one, for example, you can see we capture student engagement data, which really gives the instructor the ability to monitor student progress and performance in real time. Odigia tracks the amount of time students are spending on each of the, con within the content the number of clicks made, as well as the discussion and comments posted and review their whole performance. It's also very easy to see additional analytics, including here I'll show you some basic learning trends, or I would consider this one a learning gap. And overall, Odigia's clean and efficient interface really minimizes confusion for you as the instructor and maximizes the pro productivity, letting you as the instructor really get back to what you do best, which is teaching. I would love the opportunity to show any of the instructors that are present today how other instructors are using Odigia to help more students succeed and give you a deeper dive into our platform. Please feel free to schedule a demo with me or visit, please visit odigi.com or contact me directly. I'll go ahead and throw my contact information back up here. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has, as many of those as possible. Lindsay, thank you so much for sharing this awesome information and a look into the e-science content within the Adigia platform. We had a couple interesting questions come through that I wanted to toss your way. The first one is, um, can we just use the lab portion without the lecture? And, and there was a similar question, which was, why are post labs completed in Odigia? Can it happen in e-science? Can you do the lab part and not the lecture part? So similar, can you speak further on that? Absolutely, yes. So you can do one or the other or both. So if you wanted to, you can definitely just use the lecture materials and that's what some instructors choose to do through Odigia. Or you can go ahead and just have the virtual labs in Odigia. Or you can have what we call a combo course. So it would be a combination, just like what I was showing today, that has the OpenStax actual course materials in addition to the virtual labs. And to answer the second part of your question, Audra, or the question that the um, attendee put out there was about putting that into Odigia. And one of the main benefits of having that material in Odigia was that last screen that I showed was all of the data and analytics that's collected, that that really helps you to get to know your students better. And if you are able to have your lecture and your lab all in the same place, just really gives you some deeper understanding as to those students and what their needs are. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Great answer. Um, another one was, is there any automation on grading for large classes or do assignments have to be graded one at a time, which sounds so tedious? Yeah, absolutely. So it is really easy to grade assignments in Odigia and any of those um, auto graded, there, there are definitely auto graded features. So if it's multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, true, false, all of those type of questions definitely can be auto graded. If they are more of the open ended questions, such as a short answer or essay, something to that effect, then that would need to be graded by the instructor. But I can definitely on another time, I know we're cutting short on time, but I can show that instructor step by step how that's done. And it's very easy to go from one student to another and provide that feedback and the grades accordingly. Great. We, we have a couple more questions and luckily we have a few more minutes because our intro ran a little short. Um, the question from Professor Millen, can Odigia be incorporated into the LMS used by your institution? Absolutely. So we're partners with Canvas, Blackboard, pretty much all of the major LMS. We would go ahead and have a integration with that via LTI so that the students as well as the instructors could have utilize a single sign on as well as the abilities to export grades grade pass that type of thing as well. So yeah, we're, we're definitely partners with all of those people as well. 
Awesome. Now, a couple of questions about disciplines that we offer. Do we have organic chemistry labs currently with the eScience labs content integrated with the Odigia platform? Currently, no, we do not have any organic chemistry materials in Odigia that is correlated with the e-science right now. I believe that that's one of the courses that are in the works, though. Please correct me if I am wrong, Kate. You are correct. That is coming down the line. Yep. Great. Um, so what courses can we offer right now? Which, what ones are ready, um, the digital offerings, which ones are ready for the disciplines? Sure, so I can speak to that, Audra. So for the virtual labs that we have available, currently we just have A&P and biology, and then we have a number of others with our standard kit line, um, including some of the physical sciences. Great, great. Um, question, how does it prevent this platform students from cheating, and does it produce different questions for the same test or assignment? Yeah, so um, we do a lot of the more summative assessments in Odigia. And so, again, the instructor can have access to all of that data and metrics. But yes, we can absolutely randomize the order of the questions as well as the actual answer choices. So my number one is your number three and my A is your B, that type of thing as well. But with those formative assessments, some institutions choose to have other proctoring services or things that they have to use. So we can go ahead and I would be happy to answer that question on a one-to-one -one, just depending on the specific circumstances because I know that there's a lot of different services out there and again a lot of different regulations according to the institution. But I'd ha be happy to answer that on a one-to-one -one if there's a specific um, instructor that I can reach out with afterwards in order to answer that. Great. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I know it was just a taste of what this platform and our partnership looks like. Um, and so if anybody else wants to see the details, please feel free to reach out to someone on the eScience side or the Odigia side to schedule that demo. And we'll keep you guys posted on um, the new product offerings that we do launch. So thank you for this detailed look into the power of your software and our partnership as the teams, as I said, at Odigia and eScience Labs continue to collaborate and create we'll be sharing additional lab solution offerings to help instructors pivot online. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you so much. Our next partnership is also helping our team expand the digital learning tools instructors need to succeed in an online setting, especially if you're looking for an option to offer groundbreaking virtual dissections. Likened to Google Earth for the human body, BioDigital's 3D human vis visualization platform is the first of its kind. Through our partnering, we've taken BioDigital's virtual dissection platform and embedded it into our custom AMP course, which includes background content, dissection procedures, as well as evaluation components to test student comprehension. The ability to choose between physical and virtual dissections in an online, online lab empowers AMP educators to tailor the distance learning experience in new ways without sacrificing learning objectives. Whether you choose eScience labs or hands-on labs as your lab content of choice, you will have access to our new virtual dissection suite. Today, we'll only be previewing these new virtual dissections within the HOL content and platform. But if you reach out to a distance learning specialist, we can demo the eScience labs option as well. Dr. Hanna and Dr. Duane have joined us today to give you a special tour of our partners visualization platform and how these new dissections work within our AMP curriculum on the HOL cloud. Dr. D, it's your time to take it away. Thank, thank you so much, Audra, and thank everyone in attendance today uh, for your interest in Digital Lab Solutions uh, and your participation in this webinar. What we're going to do to explore our partnership with BioDigital is actually walk through a live interactive chapter in the Hands-On Labs HOO Cloud Lab Manual. So, if you will bear with me one moment. Uh, we will enter the lab manual as a student. 
So our lab manual is hosted on the cloud. It is interactive. It's called HOL Cloud. Within this lab manual, uh, the biodigital dissection experiments have been embedded. Uh, before a student begins completing any procedures, uh, they do need to cover any requisite coursework and complete a series of background exercises uh, before beginning the procedures. So here you see an example of a student landing page. There's a note from the instructor. There's a variety of prerequisites and then the sequence of labs that a student is expected to complete for their online course. Uh, this student has made it to gross anatomy of the central nervous system. And you'll see the first exercise for them or the first topic, I should say, within this chapter is labeled exploration. Now, the exploration content uh, is not unlike the background content in a traditional lab manual. Now, as Dr. Caitlin explained at the beginning of today's webinar, all of our curriculum is divided into three sections that are titled exploration, experimentation and evaluation, uh, conforming to the five E's of science learning. Uh, we notify all students immediately of estimated completion times uh, because this is important for your remote science students since they are not coming in person uh, to campus at a pre-described uh, day and time period. Uh, after reviewing the estimated completion time, students are presented with detailed learning objectives uh, so that students are made aware of what they are expected to accomplish by the end of the laboratory exercises. Now, before engaging with the background content of the lab, uh, the student is required to take a pre-test, test your knowledge series of questions. Now, these questions are always designed as drag and drop in functionality because these types of activities have shown to be the most engaging for remote learners. Uh, so here's a matching event. Again, the goal is for the student to display what they already understand about the subject matter being covered in this lab. Once the student makes their selections, they check their answers and they are provided with immediate feedback. So now the student can easily identify any concepts that they do not yet understand. Uh, so this conforms to metacognitive learning theory uh, and it's imperative the student be made aware of any knowledge deficiencies they have before engaging with the content. Uh, typically, there are two or more of these test your knowledge activities, these formative assessments for the student uh, before, again, they begin engaging with the content. Again, the purpose of these is always to make the student aware of what they do and do not yet understand. And again, we see the student is provided with immediate feedback. And the last type of question we see is a categorization question, but again, it is drag and drop, very engaging for the student. And once they make their selections, they are provided with immediate feedback. After completing the test your knowledge exercises, uh, the student is ready to engage with the content for the lab and we develop all of our content in-house in a very purposeful manner. It always consists of very manageable blocks of text, as you see here, with all important terms highlighted in bold, always followed by an illustration, diagram, photograph, uh, micrograph, or some type of visual representation of those concepts. Uh, because studies show that anytime a student can visually relate to content, uh, they do learn it more efficiently. At the bottom of many of these content pages are also relevant information panels titled, Did You Know? Again, this helps the student relate to the content that is being provided in the lab. At the conclusion of each of these exploration pages, students 
encounter one or more question time activities. Question time activities are designed to assess the student's understanding of the content just as it has been presented. These are always multiple choice slash true false in nature. Uh, and when a student makes their selection, they check their answer and are provided again with immediate feedback. Although now the feedback contains remediation, uh, so the student can understand what the correct answer is. So, and then the student continues throughout this section. Uh, by completing each of the content pages and the questions that occur afterwards. You will notice that each of these pages is gated, meaning the student can't simply skip through uh, to the experimental procedures. They do have to cover the content and demonstrate by answering questions that they do understand the content before moving forward. So at this point, I'm going to turn this presentation over to Dr. Hannah. Uh, she's worked closely with BioDigital to integrate their content within the HOL cloud system. So it is a seamless experience for your online laboratory students. And she's going to go into detail about how students complete the virtual dissections. Take it away, Hannah. Thank you very much there, Duane. I'm going to get my screen up here. All right, so I am now showing you the experimentation page in the HOL cloud. As you can see, the overview page is very similar to that of the exploration section. And here students can then navigate to the different protocols that they will be exploring in these labs. And I just wanna reiterate that um, all of these dissections that I'm going to demo for you are available in both the HOL delivery system and the ESL platform and content. Um, some of the, the, the biggest difference between the two is going to be how the information is delivered to the students and then how the students are then going to deliver their uh, post lab and assessment documents to the instructor. But for the most part, the protocols and the biodigital experience is going to be largely the same between the two. So when students open their experimental protocols, the first thing is they're going to be prompted to launch the biodigital dissection that they need for that specific procedure. So they just select the button and then the biodigital model will open in a different tab so that they can then toggle back and forth between the procedures and the biodigital model. For students where it is their first time interacting with the biodigital model, they can open the tutorial modal, which will then not only explain to the students how to open the tutorial that is embedded within the biodigital model, but it will also explain to them how to use individual uh, features that are gonna be really important for the students' successful completion of the procedures. So when students uh, progress through the different protocols, they will be instructed to identify and locate different very important structures of the model. So to do that, students can interact with the model in a number of different ways. Uh, one way is students can rotate the model by clicking and then dragging their mouse, as you see me doing here. Students can zoom in or out of the model and if they zoom in and they find that they're in the wrong area to view the structure that they want to look at, they can also switch to pan mode, which will just move the location of the model on their screen so that they can basically identify and locate whatever structures they need. Students can identify structures by either clicking on them with their mouse, which will then highlight the structure and give them the name of the structure. And if the students feel like they need a little bit more information about that specific structure, they can select the read more button, which will then give them a brief description of that structure or organ on the left-hand menu. If students are having difficulty locating a specific organ, they can use the open search feature, which will open on the left-hand side. They can then type in the name of the structure that they're having difficulties locating. It will be pulled up in that search feature and they just select that feature and then it will be highlighted and zoomed in on on the model to just help the students 
fully engage with their um, dissection specimens. Now, I know that a lot of you have expressed concerns about recreating this hands-on experience for the students in doing digital labs. Well, one of the ways that we're trying to get the students to get that hands-on experience as much as possible is by use, utilizing the hide feature of the biodigital model. You'll see in the protocols that once the students have identified all of the external features, they then might be asked to hide some of those external features. They can identify the internal structures. What the students then do is they switch to the hide feature and then when they, this feature is selected, whatever structure the students click on will then be removed from the model. And so in this way, we're basically recreating an actual dissection where students would be removing individual structures and seeing how all of those structures relate to each other in the actual organ. When students have identified the structures that they need to identify to successfully complete one step of the procedure, they will then be instructed to take a screenshot of their fully dissected model. They can then upload this screenshot into the data panel if they are using the HOL cloud version of this experiment. So when they select the data panel, they will have the different photo panels in which they can upload the photo of, that is being requested at that step in the protocol. Students upload the images and then they can actually label them within the cloud feature itself. And this all gets auto-saved as they're working on it. So if the students happen to lose their internet connection at any point while they're labeling one of their images, uh, they don't have to start over from scratch. The cloud will remember exactly where they were in their progress and students can pick up right where they left off. As students progress through or upon completion of the procedures, they can then answer the exercise questions that are at the bottom of the protocols. These questions will quiz the students on what they were doing throughout the procedures and just ensure that the students fully understood everything that they were supposed to get out of this uh, procedure. And these are just like with the data panel, these will be auto saved in the HOL cloud so students never have to worry about losing their progress. Now for here, I showed you one of our individual organ dissections. We have uh, four different organ dissections, which is the brain, the heart, the kidney, and the eyeball. But we also have some full body dissections that I want to show you now, just so you can get an idea of all the options that are available with BioDigital Model. So when students are performing their full body dissections, we will have them broken up in the content for the individual body systems. So a student will open a protocol and they will be instructed which body system they're looking at, and they will be instructed which body system from the chapter menu to the left-hand side they need to open in order to successfully complete that procedure. So if students are on the respiratory system lab, they will be instructed to scroll down on the chapter menu to the respiratory system model and select that to open it. Now you'll notice that for this model, some of the dissection has already been done for the student. Now the reason for that is we are trying to recreate the dissection of a physical specimen as much as possible. And we've designed this to be done assuming that the students are going in a logical order where we're assuming they're probably starting with the muscular system and then getting deeper and deeper as they go through. So muscular system to nervous system to cardiovascular system. So if they would have completed the cardiovascular system previously, they would have already removed many of the muscles that would then reveal the respiratory system underneath. So this way students aren't just constantly repeating the same dissection procedures over and over again. It's much more similar to how they would be doing it if they had the physical specimen, which is they would complete one system dissection and then move on to the next system. When they're interacting with this full body system model, it's going to be very similar to if when they were dissect interacting with the uh, individual organs. Students will be instructed to zoom in to the specific uh, region where the system is located. And then they will be you know, instructed to interact and um, select or hide different structures of the uh, body so that they can then successfully complete all of the 
post lab questions and um, documents that are required for successful completion and then successful completion of the evaluation section which uh, Duane is going, now going to walk you through once they have successfully completed their dissection of the model. They will then move on to the final lab quiz portion. So uh, Dr. D, I'll kick it back to you now. Great, thank you so much, Hannah, for that walkthrough of the BioDigital virtual dissection tools. Uh, they're certainly gonna provide some really great solutions uh, for institutions who can no longer have students come on campus and do, um, you know, for example, cadaver dissections like they had in the past. As Hannah mentioned, uh, the final chapter or section of, of each lab manual topic is titled Evaluation. Uh, now, if you recall, a student began by taking some formative assessments, which were drag and drop. They then en engaged with the background content and answered a series of questions to assess their understanding of that content after it was presented. Uh, the next step in the lab manual is that students do engage in the step-by-step -step procedures and what we saw an example of today was the virtual dissections. And then lastly, uh, a student completes the evaluation section. Uh, and the student before doing so is again reminded of time allocations and they're presented with the learning objectives yet again. And then they start the exam for the lab. You'll see the student immediately gets a pop-up and lets them know that all the content is going to be locked. Um, this is an event uh, with a time meter on it. Uh, and so the student is given some warnings about the implications of that. When the student is ready to begin, they click start evaluation. They are then presented with up to a dozen or so multiple choice questions. And these questions span, span the whole breadth of the lesson. So from the background content through the experimental procedures uh, and following up with the experimental outcomes or the data that the student would have recorded. Uh, again, these are always a multiple choice or true false in nature. I'm going to just fly through these for time's sake, uh, but you'll notice that the student does have to complete them all in one setting. And again, they can't uh, use a back button to revisit the exploration or experimentation sections uh, when completing this final exam. And at the conclusion of the exam that we're almost at, uh, the student is uh, given one last warning that they can toggle back to any of the previous questions if they would like to change their answers uh, but once they hit finish, their answers are indeed locked. The student is then provided with immediate feedback, uh, just as we've seen previously, but now the remediation is a little more detailed. So not only is the student able to determine if they got the answer correct or not, and what the correct answer was, but also which learning objective and which page of content this question uh, is focused upon. So that the student can now go back and review the information uh, one final time if they did answer the questions incorrectly. The student is then given the opportunity to answer one or more extension questions. These are always open-ended questions like we saw at the end of the experimental procedures. Uh, and these questions are designed for students to apply the knowledge that they've gained from completing the exercises to answer a uniquely focused set of content questions. A uh, student signs an authentication statement and then the information is submitted uh, and stored within the HOL cloud system. Um, some instructors and institutions give the student the ability to submit a formal PDF type document. Uh, however, again, students work is always stored in the cloud uh, and the instructor can go in and review the student's answers um, they can port the grades over through their LMS system via our integration services uh, and monitor any other types of student progress. 
So this concludes a walkthrough of both the HOL Cloud Lab Manual interactive platform and most importantly, the partnership with BioDigital and Virtual Dissections. Uh, but I want to share with you before we conclude today one additional digital tool that we have developed to, to facilitate you taking your laboratory sections online. And I'm excited to show you next our virtual microscope software. And we developed this uh, in-house actually, uh, and uh, it is designed to take the place of a physical microscope uh, in as many ways as possible to give the student that tactile experience they normally receive uh, using an actual scope. So this is not merely a collection of static images uh, that students can download and label at, at various magnification levels. This is a software representation of how a real microscope operates. Uh, this software does come with a tutorial exercise for the student uh, to complete before using the tool, and it also includes in the lower right-hand corner a checklist for the student so they can recall any of the items and how they function should they have forgotten after the tutorial. So just like a real microscope, uh, we don't see anything until we turn it on, we put a slide on the stage, we focus and we pan around, and that's what you'll see in these step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, so once we do turn on the microscope, and lower the stage, uh, we can then select a slide to view from the library. And uh, when we first put on the slide, just like on a real microscope, uh, you'll see through the, through the viewfinder here in the upper right of the screen, uh, it's quite blurry. So obviously we need to then raise the stage to bring it into some coarse focus, give or take a little bit. And then we can adjust the fine focus knob uh, and bring it into better focus. And let's see if my fumble fingers can get this right. There we go, we're getting closer. Once we get the image in focus, uh, we have the ability to pan around on the slide both forwards and backwards and side to side. And then just as in a real microscope, we can change the objective lens uh, and therefore the total magnification of the image. Once again, all of these images, uh, the student can pan to locate specific features on the slide. Uh, once a student has located a feature that was uh, prescribed within their lab manual or by their instructor, uh, the student can then download the image. It creates a JPEG file for them that they can then use to upload to share with the instructor. Uh, or if they're using the HOL Cloud Lab Manual platform, uh, as we saw with Hannah doing with the virtual dissections, the student is provided with photo panels to drag and drop these JPEG images directly into. And then they're provided with labeling tools within the HOL Cloud platform that they can use to label any structures uh, in the slide image itself. Now, if a student does not properly focus on a slide and they click download image, they are going to download a blurry image. Uh, so again, just like a student using a real microscope, what they see is based on how they use the tool. Uh, so if they don't use it correctly, uh, they are not going to get uh, the desired end results. Uh, it is worth mentioning that we are offering this virtual microscope tool on an a la carte basis currently in conjunction with having it integrated into our lab manual. So as an educator, you can choose to just adopt 
our virtual microscope software for your existing online course. Uh, our slide library consists of over 100 uh, slides. Uh, so we're bound to have something within that library to meet the needs of your A&P course or your biology course or certainly your microbiology course. Uh, and then also we have integrated this tool and make it an option within our lab manual uh, curriculum uh, that we host on HOL Cloud. So that concludes uh, my portion of today's uh, demonstration and webinar. And at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to our host, Audra. Thank you, Dr. D. We have <clears throat> about a handful of questions I'm hoping you could shed some light on. Um, we do have 10 minutes left, so we're in no rush. But the first one, um, I want to throw this out first since we're on the topic of Eadscope, is if slide needs oil, does it prompt the student? Okay, so... Uh no, we don't have a virtual oil mechanism on this microscope. Uh, what we have done internally is for any slides that would require an oil immersion lens, we have made sure that the end image using the highest power of magnification available in the microscope uh, sufficiently represents of uh, those bacteria cells or various structures within eukaryotic cells that we would traditionally use an oil immersion system to be able to view. But I do not have a, a simulated, you know, um, oil dropper or anything like that for the student to manipulate. Good to know. Can the instructor upload their own images for the V-scope? Uh, no, they can't, unfortunately, and that's because uh, b b due to the panning nature of this tool, it requires dozens of images per slide uh, to be integrated within the software so that the student can not only pan the image, but they can pan it at all levels of magnification. Um, so it, it's a little bit too sophisticated. I apologize for, you know, someone just to submit two or three static images to us to then get integrated into the system. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's the best answer I can give you as of right now. So. It's a good one. Does the microscope include a hundred times objective for the, for microbiology? So this goes back to the oil immersion question. Uh, again, for any slides that require that level of magnification, so which would be a hundred times objective lens, and then of course in addition with the ocular magnification and oil, uh, we've assured that the slide image present under the highest level of magnification uh, is specific enough for the student to be able to view those requisite structures. Okay. Thanks, Dr. D. I've got three more that are not on the topic of V-Scope, so I'm going to toss them everyone's way. Uh, the online-only e-science experiments are for non-majors biology. Is there a more robust majors version? I can Good. answer that question. Thanks, um, yeah, no problem. So as of right now, we only have the introductory biology uh, with the digital only. However, if you go through, you know, ask your uh, distance learning specialist for a demo of that. And I think that, you know, you will definitely find some pretty robust labs in there that I think will be very applicable to a major's biology course. Um, but unfortunately, our, we, ha we do have, you know, a specific majors and non-majors courses and and we don't have a dedicated digital only majors biology course, but I would definitely encourage you to take a look at that introductory biology materials and just, you know, see if you think that that could be applicable to whatever biology course you're teaching. Thanks, Hannah. Um, another one last question that I see here from Professor Miller is what is the role of the instructor when they're using these fully virtual lab series. So I can take that question. So um, the amount of involvement of the instructor really depends from instructor to instructor and how they structure their course. We find that most of our instructors are very involved, even if they are using a digital um, 
uh, lab. Uh, they are really providing a lot of the context and the framework for the students, in addition to our introductory content, to really ensure student success. Uh, we write and develop our content in hopes of being able to reach and access all of the students that are out there, but we all know that you know your students better than us, and so we um, really rely on the instructor to uh, you know, provide that support to her students through their lecture course, um, through uh, the context that they provide in introducing the virtual labs, and of course, the grading elements are still in there. We can't avoid them, especially when there's long answer questions. Um, so um, just because it's a fully virtual lab doesn't mean that the instructor can't be involved. And it's really um, comes down to uh, your comfort level and what you want to have in your course. Thanks, Kate. And also, I think that, you know, in both the cloud and Odigia's platform, there is uh, data reporting that allows instructors to identify when a student has holes in their understanding of Absolutely. the material. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so important. Um, you know, like I said, we design and hope that we can um, be accessible to all of our students. Um, but obviously, there are often knowledge gaps. And so that those data analytics that we provide really can give you a good sense of where maybe students are having difficulty or where uh, certain topics may need to be revisited or maybe don't need to be revisited because we're seeing a lot of success there. Thank you, Kate. So that brings us to the conclusion of our questions and the conclusion of our webinar. Before I sign off here, I want to just touch briefly on a lot of our attendees' comments regarding the kit component. Um, unfortunately, we, we too have been affected by COVID like everyone else. And that being said, we're working incredibly hard and are making great strides in streamlining and improving our warehouse operations. Um, but some and most of our kits are unavailable until the fall. That being said, your distance learning specialists can discuss timelines in further detail. But in the meantime, please know that all of our digital offerings that we showed you today are 100% available for fall semester use. Um, we're going to stop here unless anybody else has any questions. If we didn't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up in our follow-up email with some resources that might help clarify any information you need. Um, a big thanks to our panelists, but most importantly, a bigger thanks to the instructors who continue to educate the scientists of tomorrow, regardless of the circumstances today. Stay safe out there and thank you everyone for joining us today and thank you to our panelists and hosts.